Hi friends, my name is John Sowash, and in this video you're going to learn five ways that you can get even more value out of Google Classroom. Google Classroom is not just a place to post your homework, it's an awesome tool that you can use to connect and challenge your students. Let's get started. First thing I want to talk about is how you can use the stream page to connect with your students. Now a lot of people are frustrated by the stream page because you can't organize it. It's just this big long list of assignments. So as you can see here, all of my assignments are posted and my announcement posted a week or so ago is buried by all of the assignments that I've posted since then. Here is the secret. We're going to go into the gear in the settings for Google Classroom. We're going to go right over here. We're going to scroll down to the general tab and we're going to use this feature right here. It says classwork on the stream and we are going to change that to hide notifications. This is going to hide all of the classwork notifications so that only announcements appear on the stream page. Once you've done that, you can use the stream page to connect with your students. I love using the announcement feature in Google Classroom to post just like personal updates. Hey everybody, how you doing? What'd you do this weekend? How was prom? Uh, did you go to the football game uh, on Friday? Stuff like that gives your students an outlet to connect with you and one another socially so that you can focus on classwork um, on the classwork page. I like to use the stream like the hallway of the school. The hallway is where the chit chat happens, we have a good time. Once you enter the classroom, you go to the classwork page, that's where stuff gets serious. All right, tip number two. I'm gonna head over to the classwork page for my course. Tip number two is to use more video. Now, if you taught during the great coronavirus school shutdown, you were teaching from home remotely, you probably felt like you were creating a sub plan every single day. Sub plans are probably, possibly the worst part of teaching, and that is why you need to use video. Writing instructions is incredibly tedious and time consuming, and students don't even read them. So, post more video. There's several ways that you can do this in your classroom. Now, I like to use Screencastify. I'm actually using it right now to help me record this video. Screencastify makes it easy for me to record my screen and tell students where to click, where to go, what to do. So I do some things like this where I'll post an intro to the week. Here are the assignments for the week. And I'll actually record a screencast of me going through Google Classroom and talking about click here, do this. This also helps eliminate a lot of common issues related to Google Classroom, not knowing where to turn things in, how buttons uh, work, things like hey everyone, that. This is a video of me. Of online learning. This is also a great way for students to, again, stay connected with you even if you can't be physically with them. Works great for blended learning if you have some students who are at home and some students who are with you in the classroom. The other way you can do this is just with your mobile phone. Now we're going to talk more about your mobile phone and the Google Classroom app in a little bit, but here's a discussion question uh, I posted. So I want my students to tell me about a book that they read, but instead of typing those instructions, I recorded a short 10 second video using my phone posted it to Google Classroom and it's just me saying, hey kids, here's the discussion prompt for the day. Use more video in Google Classroom. Tip number three, use the student selector. By default, Google Classroom sends the assignments and announcements to everybody, but you don't have to make everything a one size fits all assignment. Let me show you here two different ways that you can use the student selector. So I'm gonna go into my course, I'm on the classwork page, and the first thing I wanna show you how to do is how to set up a group project. So I've created an assignment, we'll call this group A. I'm gonna edit the assignment, you fill this out with your attachments, your instructions, and everything. But then I'm gonna go over here to the right side of the screen, and I'm going to use the student selector 
to select the students in this group. Now normally, by default, all students are selected. This group, group A, is going to be Edmund, Lucy, and Peter. And so I'm going to assign this to them. They're going to receive it. And then once I've assigned the first uh, group, I'm going to go up to create and I'm going to reuse the same post. So I don't have to write it again. I'm going to reuse the post, select the same thing, but this time I'm going to go in and I'm going to select the next group of students. So in this case, we're going to select Susan and Polly are going to be in group B and then I'll click assign. So you can create differentiated assignments. You can create group projects by using that student selector. There's one final way that you can use this and that is for accommodations. If you have students who have IEPs, if you have students who are um, not native English speakers, you can create modified versions of the assignment for them. Let's look at a quick example. This is a close reading activity that I'm going to assign to all of my students. Okay, so this is an article that I got from Newzella. It's on black holes. We're going to read this together. Now, I have a student in my classroom who is a Spanish speaker, not a native English speaker, and he's really going to struggle by reading this article in English. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my student selector. I'm going to deselect my Spanish speaking student, Edmund. I'm going to go ahead and assign this close reading activity to the rest of the class. Then I'm going to, again, make a copy of the assignment, reuse post, go down and modify it, and I'm going to use the Spanish version of the article, which Newzella provides me. I'm going to attach the Spanish version of the article. Again, go to my student selector. I'm going to select Edmund from my list. And now Edmund has the same assignment, same directions, same points, but a version of the article that is specifically designed for him. You can do that for reading levels and all kinds of other accommodations. Tip number four. I've got some quick tips for improving your student feedback. Now Google's been working very hard over the past two years or so to add additional ways that teachers can provide feedback to their students. I'm going to show you three different ways that you can now do that. First, let's take a look at the rubric feature of Google Classroom. This is brilliant. It was added about a year ago. So you can now attach a rubric to an assignment. Now I've gone ahead and done that already. This is a thesis statement assignment that my students are working on. Here's my rubric. I created all of this. You can just copy and paste. If you've got an existing rubric, copy it from wherever you've got it into Google Classroom. Four points, uh, four categories. Now let's go ahead and grade a student assignment so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to go in and uh, let's work on Peter's assignment. Open up Peter. His uh, thesis will load in the center, uh, turned in through Google Docs. And over on the right, I will see my rubric criteria. So let's actually start from the bottom. Uh, mechanics looks good. Okay. Length, it's a little short, a little, not, uh, not a lot of detail. So I'm going to give um, Peter a two of four for length. Wording uh, could be stronger. We're going to give him a three. And then overall, right now, I'm going to give him a three. So um, as I click the individual uh, squares, it automatically awards those points. I can even review with what each of those squares looks like if I need to. Peter's going to be able to see that exact same criteria. I can give him some private feedback down below about how he can improve this and then return this to Peter. Now, rubrics are great for growth. If I want this to be the best thesis possible, I'm going to provide Peter that feedback. He's going to fix it, turn it back in, and then I'll regrade using the rubric and bump him up um, if he's fixed those things that I've uh, mentioned. So that's tip number one, use the rubric feature of Google Classroom. I'm going to go back to my course and show you a second thing uh, that's very helpful. We're going to look at the comment bank. Um, I've got a little guided notes activity my students were working on. They were watching a video, filling out um, this uh, guided notes document. Um, and I need to go ahead and provide some feedback to Edmund in this case. Now again, the document loads in the center. This time, I'm going to be clicking on this little icon right here. This is my comment bank. This is pretty slick, especially if you teach English language arts. 
you can create your own comment bank. You can put as many in there as you want and it's super easy to use and access those comments. All you have to do is go to the student's work, document, spreadsheet, presentation, whatever it is, add a comment, click this right here, and then the trick, here's the secret, you have to type the hashtag symbol. When you type hashtag pound, it will list your comments from the comment bank. Type in the first few words, letters, and you're off and running. Uh, this is a super fast way to add uh, comments to student work. So this maybe is incomplete, enter. That is tip number two. Definitely check out that comment bank. You can add them in, load them in right now and use them all school year long. All right, tip number three. This one is um, not technically a Google product, but it works with Google Classroom. I'd like to introduce you to a Chrome extension called Moat. M-O-T-E. Now, if you taught during uh, the coronavirus school shutdown, most of your feedback was being written to your students. And it's it's tough. Like, after you've typed the thousandth uh, private message, you're like, come on, there's got to be a better way. I'm going to go ahead and open up a third student uh, assignment. This is our interactive notebook. Go ahead and look at this. All right, let's uh, use Susan this time. I'm gonna open up student's assignment, but I have the Moat Chrome extension enabled, okay? So here's a Venn diagram. I can go ahead and insert a comment, just like we looked previously, but when you have the Moat Chrome extension enabled, you will see this icon appear in pretty much any text box. This allows you to leave a voice comment. So I just click Moat, I say, hey, Susan, doesn't look like your Venn diagram has been completed. Please make sure that this gets turned in by Monday. Thank you. That was actually recorded and is going to put the recording in uh, the comment. Now, when a student has the Moat extension installed, they can actually click the play button to hear hey, Susan, my comment. It also transcribes it, so if they'd rather read the comment, they can do that as well. Now, the student doesn't have to have the mode extension. Um, the play button will not appear unless the mode extension is installed, but it's super slick, and if you're sick of typing comments, you need to check out Moat. It's a free extension. You can install it on your uh, Mac, PC, or Chromebook. All right, tip number five, we're gonna wrap this up. You really need to be using the Google Classroom mobile application. Now I put my laptop away, I've got my uh, tablet out. I'm running the Android Google Classroom app right now, but this works exactly the same for iPhone um, and iPad. There are some bonus features that you get when you use the mobile application. You will not see these things if you're using the website, classroom.google.com. You have to be using the mobile application. Let's take a quick look. First off, I want to show you how I have begun replying to student private comments. Okay, so here is um, an assignment. Uh, Peter turned in and he is asking me a question. This is a private comment here. How many words does this have to be? Now, I learned how to do this during quarantine teaching because I was sick of typing responses out. When you're on your phone or your tablet, you can click in the private comment field and every mobile device gives you this little microphone icon. This allows you to do uh, speech to text. Hey Peter, there is no minimum or maximum length for this assignment period. That's it. So I can dictate my uh, response, press send, and I'm good to go. I can't tell you how many private comments I have replied to uh, while on walks or out and about you know, uh, with my family. It's just a super quick, easy way to give students the feedback they need without having to sit in front of your computer all day long. Um, that's again, just a uh, feature of your phone, of your tablet. It's not even technically a Google Classroom specific uh, feature. All right, let's look at something else here. I'm gonna go back to the uh, classwork page and uh, we're actually gonna revisit our thesis uh, assignment from a little bit earlier ago. We looked at the rubric feature. Now, if you um, wanted 
to grade student assignments on your phone or tablet, you get a bonus feature. So here is Edmund's thesis statement. We graded this with a rubric earlier, but when you open it on a tablet, you get a little bit different experience. Very sparse, I don't get all the standard um, Google Classroom grading features that we saw earlier. However, if you look up in the top right corner, I do have this little pencil icon. And that allows me to annotate on top of the student's work. This is a pretty slick feature. I can, you know, highlight things. Um, I can circle anything that is, you know, spelled incorrectly. I can write little notes. Great job. Um, now I have a stylus. You can use your finger if you want. It's up to you. Um, but those annotations go on top of the student's Google Doc in this case. It works with anything. Then I'm going to click the Save button up in the top. And it's going to attach a PDF version with my edits. So you can look at the PDF um, and then go back to their original, make the corrections uh, that I noted, and they're on their way. That feature is only available through the Google Classroom mobile app. It's super slick. Uh, a lot of English teachers really enjoy and appreciate that. All right, one more thing I want to show you. This is a uh, just a fun bonus feature. Um, there is a random student selector in the Google Classroom mobile app. So you need to open the app and they're going to click on the people tab down in the bottom corner. And over in the far right, you're going to see this really funky looking symbol. You probably never even noticed it before, but it's really cool. This is the random student selector. So um, the idea is that you would be carrying around your phone while you're in class. And if you're calling on students, you would open this up and you say, Lucy, hey, what do you think about this? If Lucy is there, you can call on her and you go to next. And now it's Peter's turn. Now, Peter might be absent. So we'll click absent, go to next. Edmund, oh, Edmund's there, but he's not ready. Wasn't paying attention, call later. And it actually, you can see over on the left here, it keeps track of how many times a student has been called, how many times they were absent, and it will not give you a student who you called on until everyone else has been cycled through. It's just a fun little bonus feature. Um, it's you know easier than picking out popsicle sticks or trying to get a random uh, mix of your students. But again, only available through the mobile application. I hope you enjoyed this video on five tips for getting more value out of Google Classroom. Thanks for watching.